Last week, British voters went to the polls to vote in the European Union elections, and the results were a big victory for the brand new Brexit Party. The Brexit Party demands a very simple thing that the British government honor the 2016 referendum to leave the EU. Britain was already supposed to be out of the EU months ago, but the people in charge have dragged their feet and are now demanding a second vote. As in the United States, democracy is only welcome when it confirms the policies chosen by people in power, in case you haven't noticed. Nigel Farage leads the Brexit party, and he joins us tonight. Nigel Farage, thanks very much for coming on. Congratulations. And if you would, crisply for our American audience, explain why three years after Brexit, the UK is still in the EU. Yeah, we voted in a referendum to leave the European Union, the greatest democratic exercise, the most voters ever in the history of our nation. We then, the next year, in a general election, voted for Labour and Conservative parties, our traditional parties, both of whom promised they would honour the result of the referendum. And the date was set. It was put into British law. We were leaving on March 29th, 2019. And guess what happened? We didn't leave. And they kicked the can down the road to the end of October, the 31st of October, Halloween. Uh, and I watched all of this as being one of the architects of the original Brexit referendum and vote. And I thought, I can't stand aside. I, I can't bear the fact we're having to send members of the European Parliament back to Brussels. So I founded the Brexit party. And would you believe, within six weeks of a brand new party being set up, we topped the polls, we smashed the Conservative Party, we smashed the Labour Party, um, and regrettably, I'm back here in Brussels, Tucker, after 20 years, once again as a member of the European Parliament. Now, I know it's complicated, but I explain, if you can, how it is a liberal or progressive position to remain in the German Empire, which is basically what the EU is. Why is that considered liberal? Because they claim that as a European Union they will deal with climate change. Uh, they claim that because they have open borders, this is the modern liberal approach to the future. What they don't tell you is they are literally killing and destroying something. Something so important that just next week we're going to celebrate the 75th anniversary of D-Day when America and Canada and others came to our aid, helped us liberate you know, Europe from Nazism to bring back something called democracy. And what the European yeah. Union does, it crushes democracy, it takes decision-making powers away from ordinary people and gives it to unelected bureaucrats. Right. Well, the, the head of the European Commission doesn't appear to be cutting you any slack. There's a quote, a remarkable quote, just the other day, which doubtless you saw, and I'm quoting now. These stupid nationalists, he said, they are in love with their own countries. It doesn't sound like people like this have learned anything from these votes. No. No, this is Mr. Juncker, who is president of the European Commission. That's his quote. But, you know, the people I blame aren't necessarily the Brussels bureaucrats. The people I blame are British politicians in yes. Westminster who have not had the courage to take back the independence, sovereignty, democracy of our country. Last week, I've given them the biggest seismic shock that has been seen in modern British politics. And I'll make you this one promise. If we do not leave the European Union on October the 31st, I will lead the Brexit party after that into the next general election and yes. we will sweep away parties that have dominated British politics for over 100 years. We could be talking to the next Prime Minister of Great Britain, Nigel Farage. Thank you very much for joining us tonight and good luck. Thank you.